Atari brings the computer age home. Ready? Bonjour. Bonjour. Not quite. Try one more time. Bonjour. Learn a new language or take your best shot at Missile Command. With an Atari 400 home computer, there are a world of possibilities. In fact, it could even change your life. The Atari 400 home computer. We brought the computer age home. Hello, and welcome to the Peek and Poke Computer Museum in Rijeka, Croatia. Our museum houses over a thousand game consoles, computers, and all sorts of technological marvels from the past. But today, we will be looking at Atari's first attempt at a successor to the iconic Atari VCS, or as it was later and more commonly known as, the Atari 2600. This inaugural attempt, which featured the Atari 400 and 800, was the start of a relatively unsuccessful line of 8-bit home computers. Riding on the success of the Atari VCS in 1977, Atari undoubtedly looked at the market trends and realized companies like Radio Shack, Apple, and Commodore had seized on a very lucrative home computer market. As they themselves incorrectly projected the 2600 would only have a lifespan of three years, Atari quickly began design on their own line of home computers. Initially, Atari envisioned two levels of home computer. One, the basic home computer designed for games that would function like a 2600 with upgraded graphics and sound capabilities. The other, a more refined home computer that would compete with its rivals in the home computer market. Originally announced at CES in 1978, both the Atari 400 and 800 were released in November 1979, which may have been two years late to the home computer party. Both computers shipped with 8K of base RAM and an MOS 6502 running at 1.8 MHz. These computers were far from computing powerhouses, and their success would have to rely on the name recognition of Atari within the game market. Atari's initial idea was sound, and their sizable portion of the video game market the success of their machines seemed destined, but issues such as FCC regulation and the falling price of RAM and the failure to consider backwards compatibility really hindered Atari's first foray into the home computer market. The first issue, and the one most apparent when one tries to pick up the machines, are the FCC regulations, which required the internal components to be enclosed within an aluminum Faraday cage. This did a few undesirable things. One, it made the machines very heavy and expensive to produce, thus driving up costs. And two, it made expansion ports inaccessible from the outside, requiring users to open the cases to access the ports. Expensive and hard to add expansions to, the 400 and 800 were not off to a great start. Next was the falling price of RAM. Originally, the 400 and 800 were meant to designate the amount of included RAM. 4K and 8K respectively, but due to the falling RAM prices, both machines shipped with 8K, thus muddying the waters. The 800 would later receive an upgrade to 48K, but that was also riddled with its own overheating issues. Both computers output 24 by 40 lines of text and resolutions of 320 by 192 monochrome, 160 by 96 with 128 colors, and 4 backwards compatible 9-pin controller ports. The 400 featured an inexpensive wipe clean keyboard, only one cartridge slot, two internal expansion slots, whereas the 800 had a full typewriter style keyboard, two cartridge slots, and four internal expansion ports. Given the only thing burnt into ROM was a simple typing program, the two cartridge slots meant users could load both basic and additional programs at the same time. But these extra features don't really seem to bridge the pricing gap between the two models. At their introductory prices of $549.95 for the 400 and $999.95 for the 800, neither computer could be considered a bargain, especially when compared to the $199.95 price tag of the 2600, which features an equal or greater line of games. It may seem unfairly harsh to criticize Atari, given the company's place within the pantheon of computing and gaming, 
but their home computers were far from successful. It is true, some later 16-bit models would provide users with innovation and novel computing experience, but overall, Atari was far from successful in the home computer market. Perhaps if the 400 and 800 were backwards compatible with the 2600 cartridges, or if the Atari had maintained a higher level of standard for their games, they would have fared better overall. Atari lacked both the innovation and success of their rivals like Apple or Commodore, and they failed to capture any real appreciable market share. The later failure of the 5200 and the inability to keep up with the competition on either the game console or home computer market ultimately led to Atari's downfall. Still, the 400 and 800 remain a robust relic of a bygone era. If you would like to see the 400, 800, or many other computers and consoles in the Atari line, come on down to the Beacon Poke. Call or email ahead and we will try our best to facilitate a unique experience. If you like this video and want to stay up to date on the museum, please subscribe to our channel and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Have a nice day! high grade. I use an Atari at home and I, I use it for word processing and to teach myself other programming languages. Well, the graphics are probably some of the best you can find. The Atari 800 computer not only allows you to play games, it also allows you to learn math and history. Only one computer lets you enjoy this library of over 2,000 enlightening and entertaining programs. Atari Home Computer. The more you learn, the more you can program and there's just no end to it.